Hi, this is Jeff Evans from Evans Performance Academy. We're going to be taking a look at some basics with our PC Link software so you can get started with your Link G5 or G4X system. Without further wait, let's jump in to check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at how to download and install our PC Link software onto our laptops. Our PC Link software is going to allow us to communicate between our laptop and the G5 box you purchased. This is going to be the most basic thing we have to have installed onto our laptop to follow along with any tuning and content for our training course here. Let's jump into our website on linkiesu.com and we're gonna go ahead and make sure that's into your browser. On the main page of the website, what we're looking for here is going to be our support tab. We can find that located right here. Now the website may change in the future, so if you're watching this, let's say six months, a year, two years from now, you may find that the support tab and the look of the website is going to be different. What we're looking for is this tab, depending on, again, where it's going to be located, where they change things to. Let's go ahead and click on our support option right now. It's going to take us to our download section from our website here. Let's go to the product support page. We can see that's open up right now. If we scroll down here, we're going to see that we have PC link software, PDM link software, manuals and guides. What we're looking for specifically is our PC link download option right here. This allows us to download the software onto our laptops. Now, the PDM link software is something that you may want to go ahead and download as well while you're here. If you have a PDM module from Link, and we will be talking about how to work with this in the training course in the future, but for right now, what we're focused on is getting the PC link download software onto our laptops. You may also want to go ahead and download any G5 manuals right here, quick start guide, input output tables. This is included in the box with your G5, that printed version, so you don't necessarily have to click on this to download it, but that is available right there. Okay, let's go here to our PC link download option. Let's go ahead and allow that to load onto the web browser. And we can see under the PC link downloads, we find download for G5, G4X. There's also download older versions. Now the download older versions would be really applicable to the G4X boxes. We want to make sure we're using the latest software from Link for the G5, so we want to go ahead and use this option right here. Now the G5 software is backwards compatible with the G4X, so if you have an older G4X, you can use the G5 software. In fact, Link is going to be pushing everyone towards using the G5 software with the Link G4X. But for right now, let's focus on everything G5. Let's go ahead and download for G5, click this option. It's going to scroll us to the bottom portion of our page here. We can see at the time of filming right now, the latest version available from Link is 7.2.2. We can see the release date. And then we see these gray boxes. There's different versions of the software that we can download. We can see there's English only, English Spanish, English French. There's English, looks like Chinese and Japanese. I don't speak these native languages, so I'm not sure what these actually say. But in my case, I'm only interested in the English version of the software. So we're going to go ahead and choose English only. Again, if you're speaking other native languages, you may want to go choose these other options here. So let's go ahead and click English only. Allow that to download. We can see it's downloading pretty quick right off the top here. And now I'm going to go here to open file. Now this process is simple. Now I am filming on a Windows 10 laptop. The software is compatible with Windows 10 and 11. So if you're on a Windows 11 laptop, chances are you probably are, um, may look a little bit differently in terms of the download area here and where you source the actual file from. But in my case, Windows 10, this should be fairly familiar if you're on a Windows 10 device. Uh, we can see right now it's going to ask me, do you want to go ahead and allow changes to your device from this particular software here? And we're going to say yes. And it's going to start the installation process. Now it's going to show us where it's going to download to. It's going to create under their C drive, link G5 folder. That's fine. Let's click next. Now in this case, it's telling me that I have a folder there already because I've downloaded the software in the past. Before I started to film, I uninstalled the software so I could go through the process with you on screen. So this may not pop up for you. If you haven't downloaded it, you won't find this window pops up. I'm going to click yes, allow that to go ahead and create that folder or replace that folder in the same location. Now the other thing it's going to do here under the start menu, it's going to have a quick link under Link ECU. That's fine. We'll allow it to go ahead and create that right there. Let's click next. Now we see that the software is ready to install. We can see the location is C drive Link G5. Start menu folder Link ECU. That's fine. These are the defaults. Let's click install. The install should be pretty quick. And then we can find here there is a device driver that needs to be installed. So we'll go ahead and click next. That installed pretty quickly. Let's click finish. And now we're done installing the software. It's very simple. 
Let's click finish here. And the next step is gonna go ahead and open up the actual software. We have some options in Windows 10. We can go here and we can actually just go into the bottom and click G5. When I populate that, we can see that we can just click on the app or the software we've installed. Alternatively, we can go here if we minimize, go to the desktop and we can go ahead and source the quick shortcut icon link on the desktop. If we click here, it's gonna open up the software. So we can type it down here, G5, simple, or we can go ahead and grab that icon and double click on our desktop. Let's go ahead and double click that. Now, one thing I wanna do, and we can see right now, it's already recognizing the G5, and I'll talk about that in a second. One thing I wanna do here, why have the software open? I wanna go ahead into the bottom here, and I wanna right click, and I wanna to go to pin to taskbar. This is gonna allow me to have that quick icon link right down here in my taskbar. Now you'll find on my laptop, I have the G4X software, the G4 Plus software, now I have the G5. What I'm gonna do is simply drag this over in my taskbar so I can access this software pretty easily. All right, now that I've pinned that to taskbar, giving me another way to source the software if I wanna open it up on my laptop, we're gonna be found that we have this search for ECU function populate. In my case, my G5 box is turned on. I have the USB cable plugged into my laptop and it's automatically recognizing the G5 box on COM22 on my laptop. Now, if you're not finding anything populates here, I'm gonna go ahead and click refresh and we can see that it's still showing me the same options. I'm gonna go ahead and choose this first option and click OK. And when I do this, it automatically prompts with a unlock code feature that's needed. And we'll talk about that here in a second. What we're gonna notice is that I'm online. We can see up top here, it's showing in the green online. That's my communication speed. Everything is good. I'm communicating. My G5 is powered on. It's in the vehicle, key on engine off. So at this point, we can't start the engine with the G5. We have a lot of things to account for and to program. This is, again, getting the basics out of the way. So let's deal with this pop-up screen right here and talk about what we need to do. It's telling us that the ECU is disabled. Any link product that ships from a vendor, and you have it brand new, it'll require you to unlock the ECU. They do this for security reasons. So if the box gets stolen, link can disable it and the box is useless. In this case, we wanna go ahead and enable it. In order to do that, you need an unlock code from the vendor you purchased your link from. In my case, Link supplied me with a loaner box here, a G5 box, to film the training course. And I've obtained the unlock code from Link before I started to film. So this will be the next thing that you have to do in order to get started with your G5. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK here, and I'm going to enter in the unlock code and do the unlock process here so you can see this. So I'll go up here to ECU controls, and then we're gonna scroll our way down here to ECU unlock. This is where you actually do the unlock process. Now it recognizes the serial number of my G5. So you can see it's gonna be this six digit number. The unlock code has to be entered in here, and then once it's entered in, we click unlock. Simple as that, the ECU will be unlocked, meaning we're able to actually work with it, put a file into the box, start to change things, and actually run our engine on it. If you do not unlock it, the box is not going to be useful. It is a paperweight at that point. Okay, so I have the unlock code. I have it copied from an email from Link. I'm going to copy it right here, so Control C. I'm gonna go pop into here, go into the unlock code, and then paste it, control V. Let's go to unlock and see if this is gonna work. Now, we can see the unlock code's accepted. Simple as that. If it doesn't accept it, it'll prompt you up and say that the code failed and you'll have to obtain a correct code. So in our case, we're good to go right now, and I'm actually unlocked with the G5, and I can do whatever I want to it. I can send files, like data log, I can start to actually work with it for tuning purposes. Let's go here and just click OK again, so it's gonna go ahead and connect. It's giving me an error right here, unable to connect to the ECU, so it might have been something strange there uh, because I was online, and then I looks like it prompted me to reconnect. Now it's, uh, let's go ahead here, just reconnect to the ECU. There we go, now we're back online. So that, that message that popped up, I probably didn't need to click OK, probably could have canceled it, it was already online. Okay, so we can see at this point, we have the software onto our laptops, we've unlocked our G5. So we've taken the first steps to get started doing any tuning and calibrating with our G5 and the first steps to get started with our training course. It's gonna be where we end for this training module. The next training module, we're gonna jump in and learn some other specifics, doing a firmware update and doing some other basics 
with the ECU, making sure it's ready to actually calibrate and tune and start our training course. Thanks for watching our tutorial. If you're interested in learning more about how to tune your Link G5 or G4X system, check out the video description below where you can find links to our school, some promo codes to get you started and save some money. If you're interested in learning more about Link Engine Management products, also check out the video description below. That's gonna wrap it up here. I hope to see you guys in our school.